Thank you, uh, Dr. Chipman. Excellencies, distinguished leaders, uh, government ministers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bulubinaka, and greetings from uh, Fiji. I wish to thank the government of Singapore and particularly the International Institute for Security for Strategic uh, Studies for inviting uh, Fiji to speak on this session, and uh, it is my pleasure to offer some insights on uh, uh, the topic of securing regional sec uh, stability. The IISS Shangri-La Dialogue is a vital platform in sharing experiences and solving uh, uh, pressing challenges. As such, we would like to thank the IISS for uh, this opportunity, and particularly we have learned a lot uh, in these past two days and uh, see this as the beginning of greater cooperation amongst uh, countries and, of course, all uh, stakeholders, particularly after the COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, the heightened uh, geopolitical competition in the Asia-Pacific region has been the primary focus of this dialogue and has attracted a lot of discussions. However, I hope that I will not disappoint you if I digress a bit and focus more on a much imminent threat that is a major concern to every Pacific Islander, and that is climate change. On February 20th February 2016, tropical cyclone Winston made landfall in Fiji. Its 250 kilometers per hour winds tore apart homes, uprooted crops, devastated livelihoods, caused a U.S. 1.4 billion uh, in damages. That's one third of our GDP gone within 36 hours. Again, on 17th uh, December 2020, in the midst of uh, combating the COVID-19 pandemic, tropical cyclone Yasa also made landfall in Fiji. Its 260 kilometers per hour winds destroyed schools, ruined the hospitals, and ripped apart roads. This year, on 10th January, Tropical Storm Cody dropped 369 millimeters of rain in just 24 hours, causing devastating floods and displaced over 4,000 of my fellow Fijians. In Fiji, we are not threatened by geopolitical competition. In our Blue Pacific continent, Machine guns, fighter jets, grey ships, and green battalions are not our primary security concern. The single greatest threat to our very existence is climate change. And our hopes and dreams of prosperity, sorry, it uh, threatens our very hopes and dreams of prosperity. Human-induced, devastating climate change. I must thank uh, my dear brother, the Honourable Minister for Defence of New Zealand, in speaking so eloquently on this subject yesterday during the special event on climate change and green defence. Thank you, Minister. Climate change is a threat to our very existence. Waves are crashing at our doorsteps. Winds are battering our homes. We are being assaulted by this enemy from many angles. We are the Blue Pacific continent, and we are standing up together, rolling our sleeves, 
fighting for our lives. This morning you have asked us to discuss a new idea for securing regional security. On behalf of Fiji and the Pacific, I offer two new ideas. One, security is broader than many of us have traditionally defined it. I've talked about climate change. Of course, we consider traditional and non-traditional threats. But as the Honorable uh, Minister from Canada, our last speaker, has stated that there are serious security implications arising out of climate change issues. Two, we have to adapt how we work and who we work with to achieve stability in this new context. In the Pacific, we are building our defense capability to rise to the challenges posed by these new, not by new hypersonic technology, but by cyclones, floods, viruses, and disinformation and misinformation. These are the front lines we are being forced to fight on. COVID-19 pandemic has left us in no doubt that health security is a central part of national and regional security. Indeed, in 2020, the Pacific region invoked our preeminent regional security cooperation arrangement, the Boyd Declaration, to unite us in a fight against COVID-19. And the COVID-19 pandemic forced us, as a national and regional security sector, to form new partnerships. In our COVID-19 response, we saw how critical the whole of nation partnerships were in order to maintain health security. Our soldiers work side by side with nurses and doctors to fight against this new enemy. And together, we saved hundreds, if not thousands of lives. Similarly, we saw through our COVID-19 operations the implications and indeed the pervasive reach of disinformation and misinformation. Misinformation spread faster than any enemy advance we witnessed, and it threatened the security of our people. Seeing that mis what in misinformation could do to undermine science and public health was a profound wake-up call for our national security considerations. We are now embarking on a deep analysis of how we can better counter misinformation, and we will again be working with a range of new non-traditional partners from across government and in the private sector to ensure that we can make our people safer and more secure from this threat. Over the last 12 months, the Fijian government has been examining its draft national security strategy to get a better understanding of how we, as a whole of government approach, can protect our people against the broad range of traditional and non-traditional security threats that they now face. We undertook a whole of government and whole of community analysis of the sweet environment, environmental threats that could have significant implications for our national security. We are looking at how cross-agency and community partnerships can, strand, can be strengthened to form a novel, people-focused early warning surveillance systems for, those, for this broad range of security threats. The Fijian government, through my ministry, believes that the way we are going about enhancing our responses to non-traditional threats will also support our ongoing efforts and focus on traditional threats. We in the Pacific do not want to stand by and wait for the next disaster. We don't want to wait for the tides to wash through our living rooms. We don't want to wait for the next virus to threaten our health and the next lie to mislead our people. We don't, do not want to stand by and wait for the next climate threat to become a reality. We want to be able to prepare. So please join us in this fight. In concluding, let me say this. We can, cannot deal effectively with our challenges alone, and we need the support of other countries and institutions in the region to assist especially in information sharing and capability development. This Sangrila Dialogue is one such platform that affords the opportunity for participants to discuss shared interests 
challenges and also new ideas. As such, it continues to be useful in assisting respective countries and regions work towards improving security and defense mechanisms uh, in their countries. The need to continue to develop and implement appropriate regional and government policies and frameworks to meet the demands of the ever-changing security landscape are necessary if we are to remain relevant. The need to continue talks with relevant stakeholders in pushing for new ideas of collaboration and cooperation is necessary as countries start to pave a way forward after the COVID-19 pandemic challenges. Fiji, as a small developing state, will continue to learn and be guided by such dialogues, whilst also relying on its strategic partners from across the region. Again, on behalf of the Fijian government and our delegation represented at this dialogue, we are thankful for this opportunity. Thank you.